So I wanted to do another video um, since I was it was late doing um, morning prayer. Uh, and again, guys, I apologize for that. That was uh, a mess up on my part because um, I slept a little too late and was in a hurry and uh, didn't get things squared away like I should have. But God still waits for it and he still loves it when we pray to him. So I was having a conversation with someone yesterday. You guys saw a couple of videos I did uh, mentioning the situation. Um and I went and watched other videos because, you know, I, I don't want to just when somebody claims something or somebody seems, well, I should say that to me, there's certain things that I look for and I see in someone's people comments and videos that tell me it, attention needs to be paid to this situation, right or wrong. And I went and I did that to the, the person. And, and you know what? If that person is watching, I, I didn't mean anything that I posted to be derogatory or to be hurtful i was saying that as a warning because we can't just go around saying we're prophets and ex not expect some kind of repercussion to come from that if we're not giving prophetic statements especially if everything we say is just scripture and we're parroting what other people are saying if you're going to be a prophet you have to give a prophetic statement uh and i didn't hear anything like that but the one thing that really stood out the one thing that really jumped at me and i see this in almost all people that are like this and worse is they make the holy name of God common and they make the, the blood atonement of Christ common. And the Bible gives, the Bible gives a lot of detail about the severity of that. It's not a good thing to make the name of the Lord common. Um, when I hear somebody, every, you know, every statement they make, Abba father, Abba father, Abba father, you need to understand what you're saying. You need to do some research into what you're saying. It sounds great, but it doesn't make you sound great. Let's be real about this. How you talk, that these are verbal fruits, and it comes from the spirit within you. There, I, I got people beating me up because I don't use Yeshua. And I'm like, okay, well, why, is, why did you pick Yeshua? Why didn't you pick Yehoshua? Why didn't you pick Esos? Why didn't you pick Isa? Why didn't you use Emmanuel? What name do you want to use? Why, didn't you, why don't you call him the anointed one? Why don't you call him the faithful? He's got a bunch of names. Why is it the name you were, became enamored with is the most important? And why are you condemning other people because they don't use it? Your verbal fruits speak about you. So it's really important to study what you're getting into. Know what you're talking about. The person I was talking to yesterday had no clue that what they were doing, and I judge this by their comment, had no clue what they were doing was actually being disrespectful to God by using Abba Father all the time. As every every statement, Abba Father, Abba Father, Abba Father. Abba is a very highly respectful term. And I got the definition up here. In the New Testament, God as Father. Abba Father. He said all things are possible to you. We're going to look at some scripture here in a minute. Father, often uh, as a familiar form of address in the Muslim families. Let's see, where was that one at? Oh, wow, that's funny. That, that uh, confirms what I said about Barabbas. <laughs> where did I find that at? Because it's actually a very respectful way to address the Father. And we'll see that in the scriptures here in a minute. When you say Abba Father, he pays very close attention to what you are to what you are saying or what you are about to pray. Where is it at? Yeah, here it is. Abba is a form of Ab, meaning Father. And actually Abba is Ab Ba. You saw that further up. Um, in many uh, Semitic languages, it is used as a given name, but was also used as a title or honorific for religious scholars or leaders. The word uh, abbot has the same root. It is a very respectful way to address him. It's like you're yelling out, Father, look at me. Father, pay attention. Glorious Father, uh, uh, I need you for something. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get, trying to honor you 
it's a way of honoring him because you're making a very specific request. Like if you're going to make an intercessory prayer over someone's life and they're laying in a deathbed and uh, Abba Father, please listen to what I'm about to say. Please spare this person. It, it creates a father, please. I'm not going into prayer about that, but it's yeah, I, I feel like I have to say that because it's that important. It, it's a very important thing to remember how to use this properly and a lot of people use it very nonchalantly and i I have a problem with that just like when they uh talk about jesus christ and they don't refer to him with reverence they just like he's an afterthought he's the one that provided you salvation i see this happen a, a bunch of times where people pretty much make the name of the son common and they the blood, the blood atonement, a common thing. And the Bible talks very specifically about that and the punishment that goes along with it. And we don't want to do that. If we love God, or if it's Christ, we say we love God, Christ in us that loves him, why wouldn't we show that? And by one way to show that is, one, prayer, giving thanks, but two, addressing him properly. If you're just going to talk and give statements uh, where the Father is being addressed in the statement, but you're not going into prayer about that, just say, Holy Father. Just say, Our Father in Heaven. Just say, God. You know, that's just you talking. It's in prayer when you use Abba Father. Now, this may be fact mixed with some of my opinion, um, but I take his authority very seriously, and I fear him. He created me. He can, just like that, make all evidence of my existence go away. Same with Jesus Christ. He was elevated above all things in heaven. He has all power at his disposal. So why would I not respect him? I know his love and his patience and his faithfulness, but the I respect what he has. I respect who he is. I respect what he has done. Great evidence of a person. You ever look for evidence of a person born again? Ask him to describe the crucifixion to you. A true born again believer with the Holy Spirit in them cannot get through it without emotional reaction. Just me and my friend Faye were sitting here talking and I could see it come up in her. And when I started to talk about it, it was coming up in me. You guys have seen it on here in some of my videos. You know, I, I avoid talking about it in great detail because it does affect me emotionally because being partakers of this with Christ, you now have that emotion in you from 2000 years ago when that happened. It, 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 it bothers you that they did that to him. If you're a true boarding in believer, it's important to be respectful to Christ, to be respectful to God, our father. And just when I hear somebody throw Abba father out there, just so nonchalantly, it really bothers me. And I'm not coming against anybody. I'm not casting any, any hatefulness or anything like that. But I do want to address this because there's little things like this that can affect our walk. Um, and sometimes these things are indicators. And what I hope, but I think she believes, I think she believes and there's a lot of other people I've addressed uh, different times. I think they believe they're just caught up in some weird stuff. And, and what I'm trying to do is reach out. Text doesn't have any emotion, so it's hard to get across the emotion. So I'm hoping they're watching or she, she's watching the video. That I don't don't mean it in that way. But there are certain things that we need to have as evidence of our walk. Uh, this doesn't save us. It just shows where we're at, whether we're on his side or whether we're on our own side. And let's get into some scripture on that. I'm going to end up ranting. Romans 8, 15. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And notice it's two different words. Notice that there's punctuation between these words. It separates them. You're addressing him. I mean, you can say Abba is father or uh, of of the Father. You can go back and look at the definitions of that, look at the different derivatives of it and how to use it. But notice that it's two different words. This is a respectful cry. Abba, Father, please listen to me. You are asking for his attention specifically upon you. You know, generally when we're just speaking or we're, we're giving a message or anything like that, Father is all that's needed. Holy Father is all that's needed. God God the Father. He doesn't have to be super respectful because we're addressing it as we're giving a teaching or sharing scripture. This is something that you would use in prayer. 
because the, the Holy Spirit within us you, uh, does this. It's not something, I just really don't think that, that every every sentence you use, you need to throw out a father in there. That's just, that's my personal thing. Because to me, it, it seems disrespectful because you're making it a common term. Galatians 4, 6, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you notice nobody has said, has said this. There is a spirit within us that has said this. Mark 14, 36, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. This is right before Jesus was crucified. You know Jesus didn't say, use this term to refer to the Father until this prayer? As far as I've been able to find, he didn't use it anywhere else until he got to this prayer. Well, what was he doing? That was when he was over the rock praying, and the, the apostles were sleeping. He was sweating blood. He was so stressed out. And he was crying out to the Father, very specific request and he wanted his attention so he used abba father but i can't find anywhere else in his ministry as, as it's recorded in the bible where he did that so this was specific a very respectful way to refer to the father and to get his attention but when you just throw it out there in every other comment it i don't know it seems like you're cheapening it first corinthians 8 6 yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. How important is God and Jesus to you? How important is Yahweh and Yeshua to you? How important is Vav Hayyad and Yehoshua to you? I know the names. People read me the riot act all the time because I don't use our, I know the names. But there are some names I choose not to use commonly because to me, that's a respectful way to address them. And only under certain circumstances do I use those addresses like Abba Father. Because if you make it cheap and you make it common... You are now taking the glory. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. You are now taking the glory and the power and the importance of what we have in our one true God and our one true Lord and everything that they have done for us to get us to the day of redemption, to take us to heaven. And you're turning it into something common. And it shouldn't be that way because that's the most important thing there is, period. It, you the blood is the most important thing, yet I hear all kinds of bad comments about it. Or people making it just some regular thing. And it's not. It is by that that you're saved. He shed that blood so you could be saved. And if you claim to follow him, show it. I guarantee when you're standing before him, you're going to show it. So let me read 1 Corinthians 8, 6 again. Listen to the importance, and this is just one scripture. Listen to the importance that's put on, on our Father and on, on our Lord. Yet for us, there is one God, the Father. He didn't say Abba Father, he said the Father. From whom are all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Do you see how he designated him or, or them? All things come from the Father through Jesus, and we exist for him. I'm talking to somebody right now that, that likes Joel Osteen, and they're making some kind of side accusations, like people that are talking bad about him, they got a problem, but I, see, I don't see Joel doing all that kind of stuff. I was like, having a nice message and a nice smile does not make you a Christian. Joel openly admits he doesn't believe. And he doesn't preach salvation by grace through faith. He, you know, I don't even hardly hear him preach salvation at all. In fact, Barry Scarborough uploaded a video about that and showed where he doesn't do it. What he does preach is your best life now. He preaches self. Are, do we exist for, for ourselves? No. We exist for the Father. We should be preaching the Father. <laughs> we should be preaching our Lord. Romans 8, 1 through 39. Thank God. Thank God for this. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That means no matter how much you mess up, 
No matter how much you doubt, no matter how much of faith you lack, you are still saved and he is still faithful and you still will not be condemned. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ. Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the faith, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Remember I told you? Sin is in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us with the inner man. Remember I told you? We're still going to sin, but it's in the flesh. It's the inner man that's sinless. It's the inner man that's redeemed, justified, sanctified. Who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. How do you walk according to the spirit? Is that being sinless? No. When you walk according to the spirit, your mind and everything you do is on godly things. And it's hard to explain, and you don't know it until you do it. Uh, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. So when you set your mind on things of the flesh, you are satisfying all the desires, all your personal desires, your best life now. When you, satisfy, when you're, look, you have your mind on things of God and things of the Spirit, you're preaching salvation to people. You need to be saved. It is vitally important that you get this. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, John 3, 16, 17, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Somebody eventually is going to say, oh, you're building a religion on those three scriptures. Religion was built on those three scriptures. Relationship was built on those three scriptures. I didn't do it. It's already been done. That's why we have those scriptures. John 4, 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now, I, there's a lot of people that I've run into, that they think this is some kind of mystical thing. Guys, your spirit is in constant communication with him. I'm sitting here right now doing this with you guys, and my spirit is in communication with him. That's evidenced by after I do this video, I won't remember what anything that was done in this video or said in this video. I have to go back and rewatch it. The revelations that I'm getting from the scriptures, I'm not getting them from other people because I've shared stuff other people haven't even seen before. That's and I, I don't have that stuff. That's coming from him. It's constant communication. That's being in the spirit. It's not some big mystical event that's going to happen where your house shakes and the colors of your walls change. So I'm going to stop there. I'm going to keep it short because I do need to go into town. I love you guys and I bless you all in Jesus' name. Don't count the blood as something common. Don't count your relationship as something common. Because these are the most important things that you need in order to be saved and have that relationship with him. The, the uh, sheep and goats. And so many people miss the, the, the depth of the meaning of that. And that is at the end of the tribulation, when all the people that are still on the earth are standing before him, he's going to go, y'all, I know, you, had a, you developed a relationship with me. You walked in the spirit. You guys, you can do all the things that you want. That's not going to make you a Christian. You never developed a relationship with me. I never knew you. Just saying you're a Christian doesn't make you a Christian. It's got to be in here. There has to be a change. And there's going to be a change. And Holy Spirit knows Holy Spirit. You run into somebody that's got the Holy Spirit in there and immediately you know it. If you're in the Spirit, you'll feel it. And y'all make a connection. People don't have the Holy Spirit, you can tell, you can feel it. So, look inward, not for self, but look inward to see where you are in your walk and in your salvation. When he, he, the, the scriptures that say work out your salvation, that's you getting da down into the meat and potatoes of your relationship with him. Where am I at? Do I truly believe? Where am I putting my faith? Is it in him or is it in what I'm able to do? Is it in Christ and what he did on the cross or is it in my ability to be good and be sinless? Where's your faith? 
You can't serve two masters. So, there was something else, but I can't seem to remember it at the moment. Well, anyway, love you guys. I bless y'all in Jesus' name. Enjoy the video. Welcome all the new subscribers. I thank you all for subscribing. I hope the, these videos bless you. Don't forget to check out the playlist that I have. I have a Revelation book playlist. I'm going through the, the Psalms. I'm going to upload a Psalms and a small book of the Bible uh, later today. Um, and I have morning prayer in a playlist. So you guys can go and check it out. Uh, that way you can go back and look at the other ones. Um, and read your Bibles. Keep reading your scriptures. Get inspired to study and to chase down new avenues and little rabbit holes of information because they'll lead you to understandings you'd never even realize were possible. I'll see you guys in the next one.